What is up guys? Welcome back to Inside Out Precision. Uh, I'm Kellen and today we are going to be reviewing the Prime Nexus 4. So we finally got one of these in. Um, when we first got our Nexus 2s in, our rep said we, we were going to have these in like three weeks. Ended up being more like six or seven weeks. But we finally got this Nexus 4 in. Um, I think this is probably going to be the most popular bow in their lineup this year. Um, I already have like four guys that have come in and shot this in the last three days that we've had it and put this on order. Um, they've all said it's probably the most stable bow at full draw that they have ever shot. Um, but before we get into all that stuff, let's get into the technical specs. So this is the Prime Nexus 4. Um, it is 34 inches axle to axle. It has a six inch brace height, uh, comes in at 4.45 pounds, like physical weight. Um, has a huge draw length adjustment. So I can go 23 and a half all the way out to 30 and a half on this, um, which is a, probably the, one of the larger like ranges of draw lengths um, out there on any bow, uh, especially while maintaining really good speeds. Um, so it IBOs at 345, so even a little bit faster than like, you know, the Matthews this year. Um, and all the same technology as the Nexus 2. If you haven't seen my Nexus 2 review, go over and check that out. Um, but real quickly, we'll go over what they've done this year. So probably the, the biggest change they made, or well, I wouldn't say the biggest, but one of the really nice changes they made was in the grip this year. So it's actually got this, this uh, like plastic casing, kind of a soft plastic casing. Underneath that plastic is what they call aerogel. And aerogel is what they line uh, like astronauts suits with. Um, so it's a very insulating, lightweight material. Um, so if you're carrying this bow around by the, by the handle in late season when it's snowing and freezing cold outside, it shouldn't get freezing cold. Um, on top of that, it's a very comfortable grip. I think Prime has one of the best grips out there, in my opinion. Um, if you missed my Nexus 32 review, uh, you, you'll notice the shape of the riser here, especially on the bottom half here, is very different. Most bows, the grip is slightly lower than center and the, the burger hole where the rest runs through uh, is in the true center of the riser. Um, and the idea with that is that then when you level your arrow, you know, with the burger hole, your arrow is in the true center of the string. Uh, Prime has gone a completely different route. Their job or what they wanted to do is make a bow that aimed extremely, extremely well. Um, and in order to do that, they had to do some things to the shape of the riser and then with the cams. So this is a dual track cam system, same one they had on the black series. What I mean by that is that instead of the main string coming up and just one string going over the top, they come up and they split it with this yoke right here. And it actually has, you know, two, like a yoke on either side here that come around and connect to the cam for the main string. Now what that does, even though it looks kind of scary and complicated, is it makes it much harder to torque that bow at full draw because I have those two, two yokes there. That cam doesn't want to, you know, the bow doesn't wobble as easily. Um, in terms of torque. Um, and in doing that, because your arrow is sitting above the center of the string, the tendency would be for that to want to throw that arrow knock high or tail high when you're tuning it. So in order to alleviate that, the top cam is actually slightly larger than the bottom cam. Uh, and then the, the way this riser is designed with this here um, compensates for the, amount, the difference in flex from the top of the riser to the bottom of the riser. Every riser is gonna have a little bit of flex. When you get too much flex or uneven flex, what happens is that even when I time the cams on this bow, meaning you know I put it in my draw board, and I come around and I watch for these draw stops to hit right on the cables here, you know I want them at the exact same time. Um, you know the riser is flexed at full draw, so if the top flexes differently than the bottom, even though my cams came around and touched the the cables at the same time at full draw, when I shoot the top or bottom of the riser flexes ahead or behind the other one and one cam actually ends up ahead or behind the other one. So what they've done here is made a platform that basically shoots with very, very little to no knock travel, which I think is, is a really important thing. Uh, most of the time when I get these tuned up, you know, if the guy's arrow spine is correct and all that, when I get these, um, you know, just eyeballing 90 degrees through the burger hole, everything centered, Usually I'm just taking out a right or left tear. Very rarely do I have a high or low tear. Um, so that's a pretty cool feature. In addition to that, um, they do have, so these are the, the draw stops right here. Um, so it is a cable stop, it's not a limb stop, so it's not going to um, 
come back and just bury on that limb. You've got a little bit of give there, which which I like. I don't limb stops aren't my favorite um, because there's when you pull on them. There's I mean, for me it kind of pulls my front arm around. You know, I shoot with a lot of back tension. Um, these are cable stops, but by adjusting slightly, I can go between by moving this one direction or the other, I can make this go between 65 and 90% let off. So for those of you who like to shoot 75, 80%, not 85, you can make that happen. Um, if you wanna go even lower, you can do that. And it's just in these little draw stops here. So that's a pretty cool feature there. You don't have to get new mods like you do on Matthews or Hoyts or anything like that. You can do it all on the same cam. Um, if it's right on the number, so like right now this is set at 30 inches, so the module is set to the, the number two slot and then my draw stop right here is also right on the number two slot. Um, when it's right on the number like that that matches the module setting, it's 85%. So they come, you know, 85 is kind of what they're designed to be at, but you can you can mess with that a little bit. So you can really get that holding weight where you want it. Um, obviously, you've got a string stop. That's nothing new. You still have the flex guard here. Um, they do come with the shim kits, so it's it's probably going to be really hard to see on this on the camera here. But those little silver pieces between the cam and the limb right there on either side, they're both top and bottom cam. Those are what you're going to use to tune this bow. So kind of like Matthews, they have the top hat system. Uh, Prime uses this shim system. It's easy. You know these axles just bolt on in and out, so you just unbolt one side, push it out, swap the spacers, and they're coming with the shim kit this year. Whereas last year they did not, and that was kind of a pain for us because. On the right-handed bows, I'm going to say 98% of them shoot tail right straight out of the box. And they come with four of the medium-sized spacers, and I almost always need, you know, two of the larger ones on the left and two of the smaller ones on the right. Um, so this year they're sending them with all the space uh, size, yeah, excuse me, different sizes of spacers that you need to tune. So there shouldn't be any reason to move your rest out of center shot on this. Um, to me, Prime has probably one of the best fit and finishes. I mean, when you look at this, everything is just so nice. Um, you know, great color scheme. This is the Grizzly Brown with the, the First Light Fusion limbs. They got a bunch of cool colors though. You can kind of mix them and match them however you want. And uh, like I said, I think this is just gonna be a really popular bow. I'm dying to get one in left hands that I can actually shoot this thing and get a really good feel for how it aims. Um, but, you know, my buddy uh, that Shoots the same bow I do now. He shot the Traverse for the last couple years, and he actually just ordered one of these. You know, he's a good shooter. I trust his opinion, uh, and he said this thing is just an absolute rock at full draw. Um, so I'm really looking forward to getting one of these in left-handed. I'm also really looking forward to see what this does for speed. I, I watched a review the other night, and I'm skeptical, but hopeful. Uh, this guy at 30 inches and 70 pounds, he shot a 500 grain arrow, and it was 298, which if that's the case, that is insane because that's like almost 20 feet a second faster than when I'm shooting out of my Traverse and that's at 75 pounds and 30 inches. Um, so again, I'm really curious to see what this bow can do. We're going to do the usual chronograph test coming up here. So 70 pounds, 30 inches with arrows, you know, from over 500 down to around 400. Uh, and then we're going to do, do the same test at 28 inches. So you should be able to get a pretty good idea. Um, of what this bow will shoot for speed, you know, based on those numbers. So anyway, I'm gonna get the chronograph set up and I'm excited to shoot this thing. All right, got the chronograph set up here. Uh, the first arrow, so this is 30 inches, 70 pounds. The first arrow I have here is a uh, 515 grain arrow. Again, I'm drawing this right-handed, I am left-handed, so I'm gonna look stupid. All right, 515 grains, 30 inches, 70 pounds. It's got a smooth draw though. All right, 276. So I don't know about that guy's 298, um, but that's still, you know, that's actually pretty much right on par with my Traverse. <laughs> okay, next arrow is 483 grains. And it is, it is solid. 281, so not much of a jump. This arrow is 460 grains.
294, so big jump there. 445 grains. Oh gosh, I only got a few of those in me. Hmm, that said 287, that can't be right. Let's try that one again. A lighter arrow should not go slower. There we go, 296. So not a huge jump, really. All right, this is a light one. This is 411. Three eleven, and this is gonna be a little burner. I hope it's long enough. This is only three hundred and sixty grains. Ooh, that is close. Three thirty three. So definitely good speeds out of that. Um, Pretty much right on par with what I thought it'd be, to be completely honest. Um, pretty much all these bows these days that are rated in that 340 to 350 range are all pretty efficient. Um, you know, that's actually really reminiscent of the Black 5 last year, like speed-wise. So uh, I'm gonna go change this to uh, 28 inches, and we're gonna run those exact same arrows and see what numbers we come up with. All right, so we're back. 28 inches, still 70 pounds. Uh, so we're gonna start with our 515 grain arrow. Um, yeah, I don't know what that guy who was shooting 298 with a 500 grain arrow, um, maybe his chronograph was off or maybe he was shooting really, really close to the bottom of the chronograph, I don't know. But when I heard that, I was like, "There's that seems too fast. Like I know they're fast, but that seems too fast. Um, but anyway, so this is 28 inches, 515 grains. Two sixty-three, which is actually not a very huge jump. I mean, only like 13 feet a second from with two less inches of draw length. It's definitely a very efficient cam. So this is a 483 grain arrow. Two seventy, four hundred and sixty. What is my cheat sheet? Four sixty-two. Let's see what this does. Two sixty-seven. I don't know why, but it does not like that arrow. Shooting that one again. It's it's done that twice with that same arrow. I don't know if it's like the wrap on there. I have no idea. So let's try that again. Again, 462 grains. Should not be slower than a 483. There we go, 276. That's about what I was expecting. 445 grain arrow. I try to always shoot these like at the same spot um, so they're going right through the same point in the chronograph so that at least, you know, it's, it's reading it consistently. Again, 445 here. 278, so hardly any bump there. That's right on top of those other arrows, so it's going through the same spot every time. This is 411. This is gonna be much quicker. 286. So we're starting to burn. 
So I don't usually go real into like, oh, is it smooth, is it quiet? But they have definitely made this bow a lot quieter. And in my opinion, they got rid of that, that little like residual twang at the end of the shot where it's just, it wasn't like a hand shock, it was just some vibration. And I really don't feel that with this, this particular model. Okay, 360 grain arrow. Three oh six. So, like I said, pretty much what I was expecting out of this. Um, what I do like is that it was efficient with the heavier arrows, um, and that was the same. That went for the same with the Black Series last year, which you can still get the Black Series, um, but definitely a good sign that it's efficient with the heavy arrow. You know, there's not a huge jump between the five fifteen and the four eighty, um, which just tells me that it's it's really efficient with that heavier arrow. Um, so. I really, really, really encourage you to go shoot one of these. Um, you know, if there was one downside to this bow, um, the, the cam system here, there's a screw on this side and then two screws on this side on the module bolt. And I've noticed, you know, guys that don't really know what they're looking for, um, you know, we set up the bow, they go shoot a bunch and they come back and go, man, my bow's making all kinds of crazy noises. I don't know what it is. And it's just those little screws start to work themselves loose over time. And then there's also another like two or three screws that literally just are like holding everything together in here. Um, you gotta make sure you're tightening those down. And it's easy to tell, you know, if you bang on the bow and you hear a little bzz, bzz, bzz out of your cam, then just check all those screws. Once you cinch them down a couple times, they seem to not come loose again. It's just, you know, from the factory, those first few hundred arrows, everything's kind of settling in, it's a little jarring. Um, and they, they tend to come loose. Um, another cool thing about Prime, and I didn't mention this before, is they will actually pay for new strings every two years. So this is a seven, seven string kit <laughs> of strings. Um, so they're not cheap, and Prime, when you register your bow as the original buyer, um, two years from that date, you can contact the dealer that you bought it from, they will contact Prime, and Prime will send them a new set of strings for this bow should you want to keep shooting these stock strings, which seem to be pretty darn good strings. Um, so again, I try to, keep, try to keep these reviews unbiased. I'm not gonna tell you, you know, for me, I think this bow is gonna aim really well. Even though I'm shooting it right-handed, I can just tell it's got that feel to it. Um, very well balanced, low center of gravity. I think it's a winner. So get out to your prime dealer, shoot the Nexus 4, let me know what you think about it. And until next time, remember, precision is a decision.